Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to Isaiah chapter 55. We're going to read the entire chapter starting in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, just a heads up, I am probably going to, I'm going to finish this series, and I think I'm going to take a break. Uh, possibly, indefinitely, I don't know, because I definitely want to get out of South Florida. I definitely want to get out of South Florida. I look at our present situation with the uh, what's going on, and uh, I just know that I don't want to be here when it hits the fan. So, with that being said, uh, like I said, if anybody, once I complete this series, anybody wants to send me a USB drive, I'd be more than happy to copy all my studies and send them to you, and you can do whatever you want with them. Post them. I don't care. You know, I don't do this. I don't copyright anything. Everything comes from the Lord. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. That's kind of how I look at it. And, uh, all right, Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and, the, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So, how can you buy water without money without price well revelation 7:17 7, for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes companion verse 21 verse 6 in revelation 21 6 and he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely revelation 22 and 1 and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of god and of the lamb Revelation 22, 17, And the Spirit and the Bride, Bride, singular, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Isaiah 55 and verse 2, Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your, and your labor for that which is not uh, for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and ee -e that which is good, and let your soul delighteth itself in fatness. Okay. So, what, uh, what are we going to eat? Well, in John 6, 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Verse 4. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he 
is near. You know, people, I'm not going to say that a deathbed conversion is impossible, but I tell you what, if uh, these people that think, well, you know, I'm going to live in sin, and then when I'm on my deathbed, you know, 30 minutes before I kick the bucket, I'm, I'm going to ask the Lord for forgiveness. Well, guess what? You might die an hour before that 30 minutes. You know? You might have a car accident the day before your deathbed and be in a coma and can't ask. You know? I, I Sometimes I think the Lord says, oh, you want to you think you're going to live in sin and then just before you die you're going to call upon me? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe the Lord will say, I don't think so. You know, remember something. It was God himself that closed the door on the ark in Noah's day. So verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it, maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may have seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. So how are these trees going to clap their hands? Well, sometimes trees are indicative or symbolic of family trees, as recorded in Ezekiel chapter 31. Let's read verse 3. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar. A cedar is a type of tree, in case those of you that don't know it. Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. The waters made him great, the deep set him up on high, with her rivers running round about his plants, and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Huh. Let's skip down to verse 7. Thus was he fair in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for the, his root was by, uh, by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God... The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. So there were other trees in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of God, and they envied him. Now let me ask you, how can trees have envy and emotion? They don't. It's figures of speech, 
family trees, people. You know, people always ask, well, where did Cain get his wife? Real simple. Read Ezekiel chapter 31, people. He went to the east of Eden and built a city. You don't build a city for a, a husband and a wife and a couple of kids. No. You build a city when you have a bunch of family trees. So that all the trees of Eden, which were in the garden of God, envied him. There you go. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 12. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Okay. Does that make sense now with Ezekiel 31? Verse 13. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And forgive my speaking, I've got uh, a bunch of cold sores in my mouth, and it hurts to uh, even talk. So, And I'm trying to finish up this Bible study. I guess I'm being attacked. I don't know. Please, people, keep me in your prayers. I need all the prayers I can get. So, all right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.